Hey everybody, Joe Border here. Um, a lot, there's been a lot of activity on my last um, Mob of the Dead ADGFX Cypher um, video because of some activity that's been on Twitter this week. And I promised I'd make a new video um, for the people who were asking questions, um, that requesting the program I showed in my video. Um, so this is the catch up. So, where did this all start? For anybody who hasn't seen it, I would recommend watching my last video. Um, it explains a lot of the groundwork to this puzzle and how I kind of approached um, decoding it. Now, the big uproar this uh, month, I suppose, since this video is quite late, um, is that Matt Maestas, who works at Treyarch, um, Treyarch? Treyarch? Joined Twitter. Um, he was answering a lot of questions quite cryptically, saying that he's under a lot of scrutiny to avoid giving out Easter eggs. But one of the things he explicitly said is that someone asked him if there were any more Easter eggs to uncover. Um, and he said, yes, the community is always finding new things. I can't say any more than that. And they said, is there anything from the old maps that still hasn't been discovered? And he said, yes, I know that no one has truly solved the Mob of the Dead ADFGX cipher. I'm sorry it was too hard. I will not speak of others. So, to his knowledge, it remains completely unsolved. Now, there's another YouTuber who's tried to decode this cipher in the past. His name is Talixion. And he joined this conversation quite promptly. I was actually watching it unfold as well. Um, obviously, I'm not as as integral to this uh, decoding process as he is. He's done a lot more work than I have. Um, so he asked directly and said, I've been looking into this quite quite strongly. Um, I know that the last part of the puzzle is the alphabet. Um, can you give me any more information than that? And he said, yes, I saw your work. Your work in the community has been really good. We tried to make this quite fun, but it's, it's ended up being super hard. Sorry about that. Um, there are no hints that exist. You need to know the transposition key too. Now, if you watch a previous video and if you watch any of Talixion's, you know that we don't need to know the transposition key. It would help a great deal, but it's not an impossible puzzle without it. It just means doing a lot more work. But ultimately what this means is that there are actually no hints within the game, which is what we were kind of after. We were hoping we'd see key square or a, a code word somewhere within the game. And it also means that other YouTubers who have claimed to have solved this puzzle saying, this is, the key, this is the key word and this is how I've deciphered it. Anybody who's actually drawn from within the game is actually wrong, um, which is a bit of a bummer for, for really everyone concerned because it meant that there's no hints out there. But whatever, back to the drawing board. Another thing that people always asked up my original video and something that someone actually put to Mark is that the giant is in France or Doris is in France or either one of those. He said, he responded back directly and said, do you have a link? Um, like my math teacher always said, you get no credit unless you show you're working out. He didn't actually respond directly to say yes or no, which quite irritated me because always in the back of my mind, I've thought some people always claim they've solved this. However, I still strongly believe that this is not the right answer. I'm hopefully going to put in some fancy graphics in this video after I finish talking. But each pair of letters in this cipher code represents one character. Now, I'm not going to put it past Treyarch or Trollarch that um, the character could be a space character. But what I'm expecting is one long string of letters and no spaces. Either way, Doris is in France and the giant is in France, both with and without spaces, don't match the number of characters we are expecting from this cipher. Therefore, it can't be that. There's just no way, unless we, we end up with a load of gibberish at the end, which we might do, I don't know. But none of the YouTubers have ever claimed that this is the answer, have ever explained their working out. They've only just said, this is the answer. Or they've said, this is the answer. I don't want to show you my working out because it's really long and complicated, which is, you know, it's, it's horse crap. You know, you need, if, if you discovered this, you would be shouting it from the rooftops. You'd be like, I have done it, please, you know, someone at MI5, give me a job. I'm, I'm a world-class code breaker. Except that obviously this, this code was broken in like, you know, the 1900s, so you're not that great. But anyway, that, you know, I strongly believe that this is not the answer we're looking for. So, to the reason you're watching my video instead of someone who's a lot better at this. Um, I designed a program uh, to help me overcome this puzzle. Um, because there's a lot of variables, because there's a lot of information we don't know, it made much more sense to brute force this than it did to, um, you know, decide, determine it myself, to come up with a solution myself. Um, which actually seemed quite prudent, since Mark's now confirmed there are no hints in-game. Um, so what we have, we have this program, which I designed to find unique 
combinations of this cipher. Now this is the original cipher text that's been flattened onto one row. You can see at the end here there's four spaces and then the AF characters. So this is the original text um, just in one line. Um, now what I found, what also other YouTubers like Telexion um, came to the conclusion of was that there are only 48 possible ways for this cipher text to be jumbled, re-jumbled up, re-jumbled back into its original form. There are only 48 possible combinations. There they are. Um, this is why I've got 48 keywords in the top bar. Um, the reason this is, is because of the way the key, the, the cipher is transposed in six columns with the four spaces at the start of the bottom row. You can watch my original video for that explanation. Um, there's nothing in particular about this output other than each of these pairs of letters will relate to a letter on this key square. So GD would be row G, column D, which is R, FF would be N, and XG would be Y. Now, mm, that's you should know that already if you're trying to solve this puzzle. Only other thing worth pointing out is that when I put in these little commas to arrange the outputs into pairs, um, I noticed that the F, this column here, FF is persistent throughout, and so is this column at the end, double A. Um, and if you check down the whole list of output, they're always in the same place. Um, so that might be a good starting point if you have any ideas about that. Other than that, continuing on. If you press this checkbox, find unique translations using key square, and decode the output, we get this. So as I said before, RNY is the first, is uh, XG, uh, GD, FF, XG. So that was the first letter. So you can see that it's, it's taken the letter from the key square and placed it in the position of that pair and given us a list of outputs. Now, here's where we need the keyword. Um, there are 48 outputs for us to check through. Human eye, I can't see any words in there. Most of them are probably gobbledygook. Even in the correct combination, we're still going to have 47 incorrect outputs. So this is why I'm putting this program to the community because one set of eyes isn't good enough for this. Um, so, this is the program. You can change some of the letters here. So, uh, rather, that we've got RNY as the start. So, if I changed uh, GD to um, G, uh, FFTU, and kept that as Y, and then decoded it again, it says Guy! Yeah! Because that the first row com corresponds to those cells. Now what we're going to see is a lot of other ones will get close to that, so you've got GYU, uh, GXO, a lot, of, a lot of the other combinations will have similar outputs. So what you find is that when you get close to a word, you'll start seeing that word in a lot of the different outputs. It gets very confusing, which is why I've gone and expanded the program again. So this idea actually came from a combination of things. Primarily, uh, it was from my sister, who was looking into this, the, the background of this problem, hoping to find um, some sort of hint. Um, particularly, she was looking into the Zodiac uh, killings in San Francisco, um, way back in the, not going to pretend I know the year. Um, what she found was that, the, obviously, the, if you're familiar with the case, the killer was leaving encoded messages in a cipher that he'd created himself, um, very interesting case um, of murders, but essentially what he, he he's the cipher that he created has still to this day never actually been solved. People are very close and they basically managed to decode some of his messages partially, um, but never fully, and they never fully understood what was happening. But one of the tricks they did was that they were certain that in his letters he was going to use the word kill. And the combination of letters double L is most likely to appear most frequently because it's a very likely combination of letters in the English language. So what I have done in this program, if I can load it back up, is for the key square, you can leave it dynamic and there's this button here that randomizes the outputs. Or what I did was leave the letters static and you can see these squares have gone blue. Now what this allows you to do is you can put in the letters as before, so say L, R, M, you can then double click the square and it will go red. And what happens now when you randomize it, those letters will remain static and not move around the board. So if you see a combination in the in here, so say this FF column, sorry, this FF column or this AA column, and you think I think that FF is going to be L because that is a commonly appearing pair, 
you can leave FF as L and just start randomly typing and then decode and get some outputs and there's nothing there so let's randomize it again and then decode it again so that's helpful so you can now leave certain keys static while you randomize them which I thought was quite a nice feature you know float my own boat <coughs> but I thought let's take it to the next level there's no way that I can be bothered to just go yeah double click that randomize decode so what I did was this the long way now the long way is experimental um, what it's going to do is it's going to kick off a thread. Now the thread is some computing concept I'm not going to get into. It's basically a background running process um, that does work that you tell it to do. So what the thread does is it randomizes the key square, keeping in mind any random characters you've assigned. You can obviously double click these again and make them not static. And then when you randomize them, it'll just randomize whatever letter it was. Um, I've made this box go up to 10 threads so you can kick off th 10 background processes to scan to create the 48 outputs and scan them and you need to put in something to check for in this box so if you were looking for the word kill type it in the box and then it will if you press the long way it will decode the text scan it for the word kill and if the word kill is in there it will present you with the output and what key square it used to generate that output now this is still dodgy, so let me show you. If I press yes, the initial lines, the cause break, and you see there the, the, the box is moving, which is, I, I love that, I love that, I think it's cool. Um, it's probably not gonna find anything straight away because it's, you know, whatever. Uh, so if I stop running and say double L instead of kill, uh, long way, yes, go. You can see there it's coming back with results and it'll come back with results as it continues to to try and break the process. You can see there that when we use the, the same key square quite a lot there, there's the same one used probably 48 times there because the letter L has been in a position where it's being used quite frequently. Um, so that's the problem. But you can increase the number of threads you're running. So 10, if I go back to the word kill, and I say I think the word kill is going, the word letter L is going to be in FF, do that then you start getting some actual responses. So you can see, kill, blah, um, yeah, you start getting some responses. You can see from the little IDs and the outputs on the left here, that different threads are coming back with these results and they're using different key squares, which is, which is quite nice. Um, so this is why I'm handing it over to you. Ah, so it's, it's, there, there's a fun one, stop running. Um, die, NN, GN, kill, and then it kind of trails off there. But what I'm hoping is that you, when you're using this program, will see a combination and you go, okay, maybe maybe that first word is die. So what is it? So where does D have to be in this key square um, for the word die to appear? And then you can static up the letters, put them in there, and then continue to run different permutations of the alphabet based on those static letters and hopefully find the right thing. Now what I like about this is it also shows you the key square. I'll try and fix this tabbing issue here. Um, it shows you the key square because it kind of needs to um, for you to be able to decipher it. And what also I'm hoping is that you might start to see a message in the key square. And because while I was decoding this, I saw the word smart appear on the first row entirely. And I was like, oh, I wouldn't put a past troll arc to, to actually have put a message in their key square as well as the keyword and the obviously decipher the text that we want at the end. So another thing the program can do, which I forgot to mention while I was recording this and realized when I was watching it back, um, this box down here that where, where you can specify a word um, for the program to look for in the output, you can specify multiple words. Um, so I was looking for the word kill, but you can also search for the words say uh, zombie or al or um, don't know, call whatever uh, and then it can as long as you separate them with a comma the program knows to look through the output um, ju just ignore all these messages when you if, if you're trying oop, if you're trying multiple messages it will the threads will do that uh, just ignore that that's just part of the program just because I'm not that great at threading um, and then hopefully with these outputs you will see some some results so where do we go from here? Um, I've got an idea to take this program to another level, and that is the same thing we do now, where different threads calculate different outputs from different key squares. 
What I want to do though is to do it in order. The moment it's generating random key squares and random isn't significant, is, is not a, a reliable way to approach this problem because we need consistent output. Um, so what I'm working on is an algorithm to actually permutate through the alphabet. Now, someone in the comments of my original video posted how many outputs that will actually be and it's, it's a hell of an amount. So what my plan is, is to when these um, outputs gets generated is to chuck them into a database or to a flat file or probably something probably will be a database due to the level of output um, and then to have a secondary service to scan that table and to delete rows that don't conform to standard English language rules uh, so for instance things like Q without a U following it um, and hopefully have the service cleanse the data that's being output from this program, um, and then which, which would hopefully then leave us with a suitable number of outputs. Now we're looking at trillions of rows of data, um, so I haven't even begun to program that, but if someone wants to, to take that idea and run with it, please do. Um, just, you know, credit where it's due, please. Um, as for this program, uh, a direct link to the program will be available in the video description, as will a link to my personal GitHub, where I post um, program code. Uh, the solution file will be available for you to download and look through. Um, I'll try to comment and clean this code up, because at the minute it's just it's a total mess. Um, but if you wanted to expand on this program in your own way, you'll have access to the code. Um, it will be licensed, so please feel free to improve on it as you see fit, but give credit where it's due to the original creator, who is me. Um, get in touch if you have any spe spe specific um, requests to do with the code. Um, obviously keeping in line with the, with the licensing agreements of open source coding. Otherwise, please take this, uh, do with it what you will. Try to solve it. If you do solve it, please get in touch. I'd love to know how it's done. Um, the community is behind you. 100% you know we, we, we need to get this solved and we need to de bleh, refute the false prophets who say they've solved it and they're liars um, otherwise happy deciphering good luck everyone and good night